Hi Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here. And section 4.04 .04 is reviewing ionic compounds, so make sure you do the worksheet. There are quiz questions where you need to know things like how to make an ionic formula, how to name an ionic compound, all the things that we've gone over and are on the worksheet. The last thing that is in this unit test are the messy middle transition metals. So what does this sentence mean? Well, we know if we look at any of the elements in group one, if we draw the Bohr diagram, they all have how many valence or outer electrons? They all have one, one valence electron. Group 2a, they all have how many valence electrons when we draw the Bohr diagrams? Two. And then we skip the messy middle transition metals. Group 3 has three valence electrons. Group 4 has four. Group 5 has five valence electrons. Six valence electrons for group six. Seven for group seven. And eight valence electrons for group eight, of course, except helium. Because it's so tiny, it only has two but it has a full outer shell and therefore it is a noble gas that will not react. All right, so that part should all be review. Now we're gonna talk about this messy middle transition metal. In your house, when your house was built, what do they use metals for? Specifically copper. Well, it's the copper wire in your house. There's also pipes and other things too, but let's think about the copper wires. What is the function of a copper wire in your home? It's to conduct electricity. Now, electricity is the movement of electrons. Electrons, electricity. And the way metals act and react, when they are together, instead of the electrons being really nice and close like they are in the pretty Bohr diagrams we've been drawing, they call it a sea of electron, like S-E-A, like the ocean. So an ocean of electron, a sea of electrons, and the electrons are flowing all over back and forth, and the flow of electricity is caused by the flow of electrons. Now the other weird thing about the messy middle transition metals is they have multiple charges. Group one, the charge after they lose one electron is always plus one. Group two, loses two electrons, the charge is plus two. Group three, loses three electrons, the charge is plus three. Group four shares. Group five, when it gains electrons, the charge is negative three, and so on, negative two, negative one, and they don't react, so zero charge. However, when you get to the messy middle transition metals, they have multiple charges. So iron, iron might be plus one, it might be part plus three, it might be plus seven. Okay, so all of these can have multiple charges, and they all can't have plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, plus six, plus seven. Some of them do have all of them, some have a combination. You don't have to memorize that by any means. But copper, for example, can be plus one. Maybe it's plus two. So it varies, and that varying amount of electrons that are going to be moving around is where we get the multiple charges from. So we can actually figure out the charges. So let's do an example of one where we know the answer ahead of time. So let's look at Li2O, lithium oxide. All right, how did we make lithium oxide? Well, if we're working backwards, we say we put lithium together with oxygen. What's the charge of lithium? Plus one. What's the charge of oxygen over here? in group six, so it gains two electrons. It now has two more electrons than it does protons. So it has a negative two charge. We put the two down here, and that's why we have Li2. We put the one down here, except again, we don't really write the one. It's like a ghost number, meaning that it's there, but we don't really write it. Okay, so that's how we got Li2O. So if you notice, we can work forwards and backwards because really what we did is we said this two was caused by the negative two charge of oxygen. This one was caused by the positive one charge of lithium. Okay, so let's do another one with a messy middle transition metal. Let's do Fe2O3. All right, let's work backwards. Now save the messy middle transition metal for last. So let's start with oxygen. We can either work backwards and say, oh yeah, 
oxygen has a minus two charge, or you can simply look at oxygen and say it's in group six, so I know it has to have a minus two charge. So what's my charge of iron? Well, it has to have that three. Is it positive or negative? Always positive. Always positive because you need to have a positive plus a negative. Now here's the cool thing, you can check your answer. What is three times two? Six. What's two times three? Six. And they are equal to each other. You don't have to do that part, but I just wanted to show it to you that that's part of how the compound as a whole is neutral because when you add up the charges, multiply the charges technically by how many atoms have that charge, you end up with the opposite. So negative six, positive six, six minus six equals zero. All right, let's do one more example. So what about this time, let's do iron again, and this time let's put it with fluorine. Okay, you can work backwards, or you can find fluorine on the periodic table. It has a minus one charge. Oh, yep, there must have been a one down here. And what does that tell us the charge of iron is? Well, that five had to come from somewhere. It comes from over here. So in this case, iron was plus five. All right, here's the trickiest I can do with it. Let's do this. F-E-O. What does the charge of oxygen have to always be? It has to be negative two. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's no number here. That means it should be a one. Well, how in the world would I go from two to one? I know this has to be a two. Oh, which tells me this had to be a two because I reduced. Like in math class, two over two equals one. I reduced that. So because I reduced it, my charge for iron on this one was positive two. That's as tricky as I can get. So always check the elements that are not messy middle transition metals first because they always have consistent charges. And then from there, work backwards and figure out your messy middle transition metal. All right, that's it. Again, do the worksheet and please come see me for help when you need it.